This meeting is being recorded. Hello, everyone. This is Ted Check, Public Relations Manager for the International Foundation for Protection Officers. I'm here with Larry Fennelly. He is the past chair of the IFPO, and he's also on the board, and also Mariana Perry. She is the secretary treasurer of the board. How are you guys doing today? We're doing, doing great. Thank, Thank you. you. Fantastic. Thanks for joining me. Really appreciate it. Mariana, let's just uh, let's just introduce you first. Tell us a little bit about your background in, uh, I believe first you, you started off in law enforcement and then uh, you, know, you got into the security industry. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, uh, I started out with the Kentucky State Police. I was a uniformed trooper and then a detective. And I think that's how a lot of people in the safety and security industry get started. Um, they're either law enforcement or military. That it really provides a nice foundation because it gives you the discipline, it gives you the knowledge of laws, it, it gives you all the information that you learn in the academy or in service training or through, uh, through schools in the military. So I think it's a nice springboard to get into the safety and security industry. Uh, while I was on the state police, I had two children and um, it was very difficult juggling my work schedule and taking care of my kids. Uh, their father was also on the state police. So when my boys were two and four, I had a really tough decision to make. And that was I needed to leave a job that I loved and kind of get my priority state straight so I could take care of my kids. So I left the state police. I did some private investigation work for a while. I finished my undergraduate degree. Um, I ended up uh, graduating with an undergraduate degree with 204 hours. I only needed 120 to graduate. I had gone to school for a long time. Um, after I finished that, I went on to Eastern Kentucky University, and uh, I have a master's degree, and I uh, graduated summa cum laude in loss prevention and safety management. Great, great. And so I think that if you have that military or that law enforcement background, you put that together with a formal education, and then you add together certifications, like what the IFPO, IFPO offers, or right. what ASIS International offers. When you have all that together, it kind of gives you that well-rounded security professional, and you have a lot of experience that you can call on, you know, for different situations. That's great, fantastic. And, and yeah, I, I would totally agree with you on that, Mariana. Um, you know the education is key, but but also the the experience. And you know when you when you marry those together, uh, as you said, you you've got uh, you've got a complete professional there. Uh, Larry, how about right. you? I think I think you had told me uh, you got your start um, at uh, at Harvard. Is that right? You you worked in the security uh, department there. Yes, that's correct. I was with the Harvard University Police for roughly thirty seven years. Wow. And then I retired in the late nineties. The, um, I was one of the first officers to go to the Cambridge Police Academy, and there was a period in the 70s when campus law enforcement were being deputized by the local sheriffs in the different counties. So we had full police powers, and when you had full police powers, you were also required to go to an academy on an annual basis. Uh, and I, I agree with what Mariana said on how the experience of being in law enforcement, for me at least, was a, it's a plus as you get into security. Because when you're a security manager, you need to know the law and how far you can go or you have no police powers. So you've got that gray line where you have to be very careful in certain incidences. Um, I think that overall, my experience at Harvard with about, let's say, they had a roughly about eight museums, 20 some odd libraries, um, 85 dormitories, a couple of garages, healthcare, hospitals in the medical school, two credit unions, two boathouses. Wow. So with all of that, as part of the structure of Harvard University, and when you're doing security assessments, you get to learn a lot. And so oh, yeah. you take your knowledge of crime prevention and implement it to create stronger buildings and better security. 
And I got to tell you, if there were times when I started, it wasn't easy. I, I would recommend high pressure sodium lights. And then I would hear comments from the planning office that would say something like, you can't put up high pressure sodium because it's going to affect the ivory on the wall. And hmm. then, you, then you want to just tear the hair out of your head. <laughs> well, but uh, Larry, you, you, uh, you know, obviously you, you became very skilled at diplomacy and, and negotiation. So you were able to implement a lot of things there at, there at Harvard um, with, with, yeah. the, uh, with the police department. And there were times when it, was, it wasn't easy either. Uh, because it's not my budget. I have to go to you and get talk you into spending money in your budget. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the money to relight a relamp a garage, then I would try to talk you into putting into next year's budget. I mean, if I have to wait a year to get a garage done, I'd wait a year. Mm -hmm. Got it. But there's always a way. Right. Uh, and so the, the thing that, you know, I've, I've known both of you, uh, well, Mariana, we've, we've never actually met, but, uh, you know, I've, I've been uh, interacting with you guys for a couple of years now. But the thing that I've always wondered is, how'd you guys join forces? You know, Larry, you're from New England, Mariana, Kentucky. How'd you guys get together? And, and, and then the, the, the thing was after that, you know, hey, let's, let's write some, let's write a whole bunch of books uh, about security. How did, how did that all happen? Hmm. We met at the ASIS seminar, oh, okay. and what we, what we had in common is I'm a former director of the National Crime Prevention Institute at the University of Louisville, and Larry had attended NCPI, and so that kind of started our conversation. How many years ago was that, Larry, that we met? I, I don't know, 10? We, we were on the Crime Prevention Council. We were on the Crime Prevention Council together, and we just had so many things in common it just everything just kind of clicked and we decided to to join forces and start working on books together. Chad, I think you'll get a kick out of this. When we were on the Crime Prevention Council, we had proposed to ASIS to do YouTube presentations. Now that was 10 hmm. years ago. And so Mary Anna and I put together about 10 or 12 small pieces that would last maybe five, seven minutes and uh, I went down to Louisville and we were in her office and we put together these videos. Oh. And then a later ASIS said, hey, hold it guys. We have to develop a policy on how we're gonna go about putting these videos on and so on and so forth. So the videos we made, we had to take off. Hmm. Okay. And that was really how we met. But the real funny part about it was I had come down with bronchitis and I had NyQuil in my suitcase and it ran all in my shirt in the back of my collar. Oh no. And we was like sitting like this so you wouldn't see the, the orange in the back. <laughs> and you didn't have a backup shirt. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> oh jeez. Man. <laughs> well, so yeah, one of the one of the uh, um, yeah, and hopefully we don't have any of that. We don't have another Nyquil incident. Uh, I, I, no. I'm hoping as I uh, as I go along with these uh, these conversations. This is I think the number nine, the ninth conversation I've had with the IFPO on on the YouTube channel. Um, but anyway, yeah. So so you guys, uh, you've written a lot of books, and, and one one of the books, uh, or it's a series, the, uh, 150 things you need to know about, and then fill in the blank. There's been a number of topics. Uh, SEPTED, I think, is one, um, and, and a bunch of others. So, so uh, uh, Mariana, maybe tell, tell me and tell everybody else you know, a little bit about that series, 150 things that you need to know. OK, these are the second edition of the 150 series books. There's one on 150 things you need to know about security. And then one is 150 things physical security. One is 150 things investigations, and one is 150 things septed. And these books have been incredibly popular. And I think it's because you can sit down and you can open the book to any page and read. You may be on an airplane, you may be in an office waiting for an appointment or something, and you can take one of these books along and, and open it to anywhere and begin reading. And there's a lot of um, tips, there's a lot of information in there just what we think that every security practitioner needs to know. 
That's great, Larry. Uh, what uh, what do you say about the uh, about the series? What do you think? Well, when I had a book that was the size of a uh, yellow pages, oh, yeah. and it was three hundred and fifty things you need to know about crime prevention, and somebody had done a lot of research with a variety of police departments, and had all the information in the book. And I just love the idea of the title of 350 Things You Need to Know. But Ted, this is not a, these are not easy books to do. Mm. And I'll give you an example. Um, the first 35 are easy. <laughs> then it gets kind of hard and you struggle a little bit and you get up to about 65, 70. And then you're ready to put a gun to your head because <laughs> oh, your brain dead. And so that's when I got to say, Mariana, I'm, I'm stuck. And she'll come up with 25 more things. Then by the time you get to like 135, you, you're really brain dead. You are struggling because it's everything that I know or everything that she knows. And then you do what you can to finish the last 15. Right, right. Now I mentioned that because just so that you understand this is not a an easy, quick policy to write all of this material. Gotcha. Then, so uh, people should appreciate it. If it's copyrighted, you've got to footnote everything. Right. And um, you have to be aware of the copyright laws, which are awful. Well, too, Larry, we on some of these topics in our in all of the 150 books, some of them are several paragraphs long and some of them are several pages long. They're all not the same. They're all not the same length. It just depends on what the specific thing is that we were talking about. Right, right. Yeah, you could be talking about kind of a just a very focused topic and you might be able to get through it quickly and then other times more more complex, I, I would imagine. But uh, yeah, right. they, they sound, but, but I like the whole, you know, these days, uh, I guess with people's attention spans, they like listicles or things in lists. And so it kind Absolutely. of sounds like a takeoff on that. You know, it's it's... 150 things. So like you said, you know, just crack it open anywhere you want and boom, you know, you can, you can go from there. Right. Well, uh, and it, it is a, they are an easy read and we try to be as sharp as we can with how we put the stuff together. Great. Great. So, and the other thing is uh, with, with you guys, obviously you're, you're, you've been in, in the security industry for a long time. Your seasoned professionals. You, you've got other things going on too. You, you know, they, you uh, you come together, you write these books, but you, you've got other things. Um, and we'll start with you, Larry. You know, maybe you could tell me, tell us a little bit about uh, the other things that you do in your life, security related. Marianna and I join forces and do risk assessments together. And I do a lot of expert witness work uh, in litigation cases. Mariana doesn't like that, but she does my research and it works out pretty well. All right. Uh, Mariana, how about, how about you? What, what else uh, do you have going on uh, security wise? Okay. Well, um, I've always done safety and security consulting. And so about three years ago, um, I bought a small company that I had been doing business with for about 10 years and it's called AEDs and safety services. And then I combined that company with my security training and assessment company. So they're all, they're both, both companies are operating under the same umbrella now. Gotcha. And so what it is, it's safety and security consulting. I do training programs. I sell AEDs and first aid supplies. And I'm more now, I've kind of shifted a little bit more towards the safety side of things. Because a lot of times with the customers, especially the large customers, there's one individual that's responsible for both safety and security. So right. it makes sense to kind of mesh those together and have them work together. So that's what I've been doing more of. That's great. You know, another thing, Ted, um, yeah. Marianne and I have done a tremendous amount of writing that we have put in the IFPO website. So if anybody's interested in reading some of the material we may have done, uh, there's plenty of material there. And I would say probably in the past couple of years, we must have written 50 different topics. And um, like, I'll give you an example. I was working on a chapter before your call about uh, security lighting 
and it's for the Effective Physical Security 6th edition. And Marianne, I believe, was the one that wrote a paper on natural light. So I included that. And there's also a section we wrote some time ago on healthy space. Now, healthy space and natural light go hand in hand for productivity purposes. Okay. So we, I, those two papers that we wrote at two different times are put at the end of this chapter on security lighting. Therefore, to do what we can to always update the material. If we have new information, we put it in the books. Gotcha. And, and also, I, I just uh, thought of this. Uh, both of you have been um, significant contributors to the, uh, to the CPO textbook uh, that the IFPO right. offers. Yeah. All right. That We've written. Like, uh, go ahead, Mariana. We've written up uh, for the CPO book. We've written for um, the executive director of the IFPO, Sandy Davies. We have written some for uh, for a book that she has put together that she edited. We've written for lots of different security publications. And like Larry said, we pretty much work together. He'll he'll write part of it. I'll write part of it. And then we kind of combine them together. And so we come up with two completely different sides and it, it makes it the topic very thorough. Larry and I probably talk almost every day. My husband understands, his wife understands and that it's <laughs> always a, call, a phone call between the two of us like every day. Oh, that's great, that's great. Like Ted, let me give you a classic example of what she just said. Sure. Somewhere, I don't know where it was, but I heard something about Bruno. Then it has occurred to me that nothing has ever been written for burnout for the protection offices. So I called up Mariana, I say, Mariana, let's, let's do a paper on burnout. So she starts it and then I might finish it off at the end. And then bingo, we've got ourselves a nice paper. Uh, Larry, I have to ask you, what, what is burnout? Well, burnout is, it gets to a point of like, you get so damn tired of what you're doing, you can't do it anymore. Oh. Burn out. Oh, okay. I'm I'm sorry. I, I grew up in New England, but I I uh, it's been a while. I, I haven't lived there. In you were thinking cars. Yeah. <laughs> burn, burnout. All right. I, I haven't been there in a while. So uh, okay. Burnout. Got it. Got it. Yeah. And um, you know, it's like there are different things that we try to do that's been different. I don't want to write the same damn kind of paper that five other guys have written already. There's plenty of new material out there. And we are always striving for new material. And we put this new material on the IFPO website. Gotcha. Okay. So, so that's in the, uh, I believe it's in the section under like research and papers. Is that, is that correct? I don't know where it is. I mean, sometimes I, I post your stuff on the, on the blog, you know, when, when, right. when you send it to me. So I've done that a number of times, I, I know. Um, but uh, it's probably under that section as well. Some other things. It, if I may, let, let's talk for a minute about certifications. Absolutely. We have, uh, I have submitted to you like 12 reasons why people need to be certified. Mm. And I mean that At least that many. I'm seeing, I'm seeing on Lincoln more and more individuals as a result of what you have been posting where someone's saying, I'm ready now for my CSSM. Right. Which, which I think that what we're doing is trying to encourage people to take advantage of these certifications for their advancement in the profession. Absolutely. Now, and I mean that sincerely. I know Mariana took the CPO a, a year ago, a couple of years ago. And, um, you know, it's, it's not an easy test. You, you have to study for it. You're not right. getting a I've gift. got the book. <laughs> Did I lose you? No, we're we're no. still here. Yeah, I, I'm just uh, there's just a little delay in 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 my uh, my speech. But I was saying I I have that CPO book, and I I would uh, I would like to take the test at some point, uh, very soon, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, the two most popular uh, certifications that you see in the security industry are the CPO through the IFPO. Right. That's one, and then the CPP through ASIS International. That's probably the two main ones that we see. And when people have those certifications, especially if you have that law enforcement or military background and a formal education to put with it, 
I mean, it immediately gives you credibility and it kind of puts, uh, lets people know that you're at a certain knowledge level, that you have a certain level of expertise in the field. You know, there's a lot of people in the security industry, but not everybody is a security professional. And that's kind of the difference. Right. And then, you know, what I've noticed, Mariana, is, is that the next step is the CSSM. For, for next step for a lot of people, at least they 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 somehow uh, you know feel that that is the next logical step is you know to get certified in uh, security supervision and management. There was there was absolutely a guy, there was a guy I connected with who has a uh, close protection company in Europe and was very quick to uh, I mean uh, he's just a very smart individual and he and he got the CPO and then a couple months later he had the CSSM and and you know sky's the limit for the guy. You're exactly right. As their career progresses, your certification levels should also progress. You know, I, I would like to give a, a very strong message on opportunities. When you have an opportunity to take these certification exams, take them. When you have an opportunity for a promotion, take it and continue to grow and continue to learn, even if you have to do self-training. Um, Ted, you mentioned a couple of the books that we've done. I'm not saying that our books are the gospel of the industry, but you know, we, I'm now doing the sixth edition of the Handbook of Loss Prevention and Crime Prevention, the sixth edition of Effective Physical Security. And if people weren't buying these books, the publisher would never do the investment of the next edition. Right. So these are books that you, people need to read. And I think the finest book, I've done over 40 books. The Handbook of Loss Prevention and Crime Prevention is probably the best one I've ever done. Because we put in so much material uh, that's current into this book. And I love it. I think it's a, a great book. Well, that's great. And, and you know, uh, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of folks that get into security get into loss prevention. That seems to me to be a very uh, popular uh, profession with, within the security industry is, is loss prevention. Um, and, and I was just, uh, you know, reading statistics of, uh, about that and, you know, that, that the losses just continue to, to rise year after year. And so it's up to the retailers to then decide, hey, what, what's going to, are we going to uh, increase our budgets in kind? you know, to, uh, in reaction to, uh, to the losses. I think most of us have worked. I'm sorry, go ahead, Larry. I think most of us have worked in retail loss prevention. Mm. You know, at some point in our careers, we have done that. And I know before I even met Larry, uh, I had his books and especially like he was talking about the handbook of loss prevention and crime prevention. I, that was on my bookshelf before I ever met him. Wow. Yeah, I, I got a I ended up getting a job years ago because the security manager had like the third edition on his shelf. And uh, when he saw my resume and he saw, looked up at his shelf, he says, I wonder if this is the same guy. And I got hired <laughs> right away. Nice, and I nice. For, him for six years. Yeah. That's great. But I, I think the big key is for people to take advantage of the opportunities that's available to them. Um, and, and I'll give you a classic example, Ted. I know you're on Lincoln. Marianne's on the Lincoln social media site. Mm -hmm. And I got a, a message the other day. Somebody was wanted to write a book, and he was looking for more information about how to do it. And I gave him my name and telephone number, and I said, give me a call, and let's talk about it. And unfortunately, the guy never called me. Hmm. So... I'm, I'm giving him an opportunity for the the 20 years of experience I've had in working with publishers, and he never took advantage of the call. So gotcha. That's what so I'm you're saying, saying when you when you see an opportunity, take it. Take it, absolutely, absolutely. Mariana, how about you? What uh, we we, we kind of we kind of moved into uh, what what sounds like a little bit of um, advice here for for people who might be interested in in security. Uh, Mariana, what would, what would be you know some things that you would tell somebody who who is interested in in security? Well, in addition to the education and the certifications, I think the opportunities. That's uh, what Larry talked about. That's that's something that everybody needs to take advantage of. 
You need to um, stay active in the industry organization. That's important, especially in the security technology industry. Things are changing so fast uh, that you need to keep up to speed with what's going on. So you need to align yourself with people that can help you do that to keep you current on things going on in the industry. And you need to be active. Like one of the one of the organizations that I'm active in is InfraGuard. And that, that provides a lot of national security information to me. And then I'll, I'm also a member of the um, International Association of Safety Professionals. And so I hear about things coming from that angle. And then from the IF, IFPO and ASIS, I get more security information. I get security and safety publications. So I try to keep myself educated and on top of everything that's going on in the industry. So if I get asked a question, at least I'll know where to go for information if I don't have it right there in front of me. That's great. That's fantastic. Larry, any, anything to add to that? No, I think she covered it very well. Do you have any questions on your sheet to, call, to ask us? Well, um, we, we talked about uh, your backgrounds, how you, how you guys got together. Um, oh, here's something. What about uh, the IFPO itself? What, uh, what, uh, where should the IFPO, what does the future hold for the IFPO? What does the future hold also for the security industry? You know, because we've seen so many changes, especially with the, uh, the pandemic. Um, we've seen, we've seen jobs, uh, you know, severe job losses, but then in other parts of the country, we've seen, um, you know, security jobs popping up. What uh, and also the role of security professionals has changed. Um, I, I've seen a lot of um, security officers taking on kind of more of a quasi law enforcement role. Uh, how do the two of you see? Uh, you know, what what holds? What's the future hold for for security professionals? Mariana. Well, it's funny. It's funny you say that because. One of the well, papers we just finished was the security officer in the 21st century. And um, I can pull it up on my computer, maybe. Um, but over, overall, here, let me see if this is it. Yeah. This is another book um, you've written? No, but I, I just, I cut and pasted it and it's going in the physical security book. But we put together recently, and I think it's on the IFPO website, 20 things security officers need to know. And let me just run through a couple of them. Know your scope of responsibility. Number two, study your post orders and pay attention to all training programs is three. Uh, daily reports can either make you shine or make you look bad. Um, you know, that would, Ted, right there is something sure. about writing a report. I can Very tell important. you in all honesty, my success has been because daily I wrote a report. Daily I could find something wrong with my tour of duty, and I would make notations of it. Because I had a lieutenant tell me after I got promoted, he says, Larry, did you ever wonder why you were on a swing shift? And I said, no, I'd never, never occurred to me. He said, well, we'd put you in the business school because we know you'd find something wrong. And then it would be in your report and we look good by sending it to the dean uh, and so on. So writing reports is important. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. You asked a very qu a good question about where is security heading? I can tell you that I think from my experience and I've been the, uh, the chairman of the board of directors of IFPO for the past year. IFPO has never been as strong as it is today. And I say that thanks to people like you putting information like this and the other interviews that you've done on the YouTube website. And I think organizations like American Society for International Security are struggling because of this pandemic and I can only wish them well and hope that they get stronger. Um, it's a tough job today with this pandemic. Um, I've talked about security numerous times with my daughter because 
she's a vice president in Goldman Sachs and more or less runs the building. And so she does not want anyone who's come to visit the company to get in the elevator, go up to the 23rd floor, if they may be in contact with some pandemics or running a fever. Right. So you have to have tight restrictions down, down in the lobby so that we don't get, we don't infect. You know, if you have a meeting like this in a, with a place like Goldman Sachs, you could get the, the whole floor could be infected. Yep. Yep. And then who's going to run the office? So right. that's what we're faced with these days. And security yeah. is in the front line. They're down in the, they're in the lobby. For sure. Mariana, yeah. Uh, yeah how about you? Where, where do you see, uh, you know, what, what's the future uh, for security, for the security industry? Well, the, the, the duties are changing. It's becoming more diverse. Everything people always talk about, well, security now is all IT and cybersecurity. My area of expertise is physical security. Physical security touches every single aspect, anything else that you do in the security industry, whether it's the security of your server rooms, there has to be physical security, like what Larry was talking about, protecting your building itself. And that is a part of your cybersecurity. But I think the IFPO is in a very good position to be a leader in the industry, just because if you look through some of the publications, especially like the, the beginning of the CSO, um, if you look through that textbook, it covers everything from physical security, IT security. It talks about so many different particular things so that when somebody goes through these certification classes, they come out very well rounded. They come out with knowledge different knowledge for a, a lot of different aspects of security. Um, and I pretty much got into a niche market where most of what I did was physical security. And I work a lot on security assessments. But when there's something that I have a question about, I have a group, there's a network group of us that we rely on each other for input when we have a project where we need somebody else's area of expertise. And so I do that a lot. Oh, that's great. That, that is that's excellent. That's excellent. Larry, it, it looked like you had something to add there. No, no, I, I just agree with her. And cybersecurity, th that's tough today. That's, you know, if, if, a, if they've been hacked, whoever the cybersecurity people are that's involved with it, they have to stay with this uh, problem from the beginning to the end. I mean, it's, it is, it's tense. Tense, a tense job, very stressful as well. But I think like we've both said, the industry has changed. And, right. uh, and let me use my old cliche, when times change, we also have to change and be that flexible to be ahead of the curve. Right, and right. I've said that several times in the books we've done. Yeah, there, there was a guy that I interviewed um, a little while ago, a couple months ago, I think it was, and he has a small company here in, in South Central Pennsylvania. And one of his clients asked him to get riot gear. And, yeah. you know, that, because that, that became a reality that, well, there was a possibility yeah. where, where that client was located, something might kick off. So, um, yeah, he's like, I never imagined when I started this company, I'd be getting riot gear. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> Things are changing. Yeah. And and look how many SWAT departments are out there. I mean, everything is uh, SWAT and these almost military trucks and um, the equipment. The equipment that's needed is now is tremendous, even in law enforcement. It, it's right. not an easy job today. You make a mistake on the street and you're going to get burnt. I, I just learned the other day of a new... Uh, non-lethal uh, device. You, you, you two might have heard of this. It's called the Bola Wrap, and basically it shoots out an eight-foot cord that that wraps around a uh, a suspect, oh, yeah. uh, like a like a, the old Bola uh, that were yeah. that was used down in I guess uh, South America. Right, right. It's got the oh, weights on right. both ends, a cord with a weight. So this is a this is a handheld device that shoots this cord out, and it just you know by by the force of it. It and there's I think there are barbs on the end. 
wraps around the individual a couple of times. So you can get them in the, uh, in the shins and then maybe go for the upper thigh and then you can, you can get them around the shoulders. And it, yeah. and it's not that, that it causes them to, you know, pancake themselves, but at least it immobilizes them for a second or two enough that a team can go in and then, and then affect the arrest, um, you know, with, with hopefully no harm. So it's, uh, yeah. it, it seems like it, it might be a nice alternative to, uh, to the taser. Because if you got a couple yeah. layers on with the taser, the barbs aren't going to get you, and it's ineffective. But I think right. also, Ted, th this is one of these things that officers are going to be trained in and probably certified by the manufacturer on how to use it. Correct. Because if you use it from, from a different way from which it's intended, and someone gets seriously hurt, you can plan on a lawsuit. Well, yeah, there's that. <laughs> sure there is. There's always that. For I sure. Mean, look at today's, today's date is the 18th of December. Between now and the 18th of January, mark my words, we're going to see another shooting on the street and Black Lives Matter will be activated in that particular area. I mean, it's like it's happening so much. That stuff has to stop. But at, at least in the interim, uh, you know, we, we've got the law enforcement and, and um, I, I, you know, uh, we've got security uh, professionals that are involved um, as well in, in response to those. So that there's, you know, you, at least you know, we have that, I, you know, at least they, they can respond. One of the books I did a couple of years ago, I had a piece, an article in it at the beginning of a chapter about fire safety and fire issues. And a prominent individual came back to me and said, Larry, we're security people. We're not a fire department. Hmm. And I replied back to him, when, when and if your building should set on fire, who's responsible to secure the building? Security is. Right. So fire safety issues are, are part of your management problems. And, and if the fire alarm goes off in the building, who responds to it? Security does. Sure, sure. So fire does be, fire safety issues are current as well. Right, it, like Mariana, that that uh, you know, kind of is a parallel to what you were saying, Mariana, about you got to be well rounded as a as a security officer. Um, the the uh, the CPO textbook helps you uh, become well-rounded and also things like uh, you know your education and your and your skills and your experience help you become well-rounded so yeah I think I think today's security officer is is just so much more than uh, observe and report right right now some of the the training that we're seeing not just with security officers but with employees of companies where Larry and I do physical security assessments they want us to do training on situational awareness. Mm. And probably in about the last five or eight years, those have become buzzwords in the industry to right. where people need to be taught how to be aware of what's going on around them. So when something happens, they're not caught totally by surprise and they don't react the wrong way. And so that's, a, that's an important part of what we do is training people in that and um, I have a training contract now with a security company where I'm training their security officers in situational awareness, wow. because that's not a skill that people are born with. It's a learned skill. And so and you can, people can teach their kids that, you can teach family members that, to not be afraid, don't be overly concerned, don't be paranoid about when you're out around people, but just be aware of what's going on, where other people are in relation to you, and if something bad happens, where are you going to go for help? Where are you going to go? And so I think that's one of the biggest things that I'm seeing now in the industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ted, I think part of our success, and I say our success, I'm talking about Mariana's and mine, mm -hmm. is that a lot of what we're writing today in the 21st century is based on our experience. Whether we are doing an assessment and we see... Um, a outrageous buildings or uh, urban design or urban urban development that's where the physical security is atrocious uh you know i remember i was i was at a building and i said to the property manager this is a property manager now 
I says, where are your monitors and where is the recorder? Because I see the cameras outside. <laughs> and his reply was, it's in an apartment up on the third floor. No one's watching it. How do you know that these cameras are all working? I'll give you right. an example. You've got 60 cameras. And how do you know camera 35 is working? You have to pull up every camera on a monthly basis to make sure it's actually working. Just because the light is green does not mean it's working and it's activating and recording. Gotcha, gotcha. And I think that's one of our items that in 150 things you need to know about physical security. Make sure your cameras are in working order. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, and I, Larry, I thought you were going to say that the guy was going to tell you, oh, that's just a fake. That's just, that's just up there as a no, deterrent no. <laughs> and it's not even real. <laughs> Look at, I was in a, I was in a museum once and I looked up in the ceiling and I said to the security director, what the hell is that up in the ceiling? Oh, he says, that's my motion detector. And I says, is it working? So he says, oh yeah, come here, I'll show you. We go into the closet. He turns the key from green to red. I just shut it off, turns it back to green. He goes, yeah, it's working. So the next morning at seven o'clock, we did a walkthrough. And you can guess the results of what we found. It didn't work. Ah. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can almost tell when you see crap up on the wall, you know it's going to be dead. <laughs> but here's this guy every night. He's turning the key. He sees green. It's working. No. When do you, you need a walk tested? It, you know, it, it, let, let me give another example. Take a building and it's got a crash bar. And there's a sign that says, pawn will go off. Will it really go off? Or is it the battery's dead? You've got to you got to test these things. Right, right, absolutely. Well, I, I want to I thank both of you. Um, I think this has been a really worthwhile uh, conversation that we've had, Mariana and Larry. Um, and uh, I think, as you said, there's uh, there's a great future in security, and and you know it's constantly evolving. But I think that's what makes it exciting. And um, so hopefully, you know, uh, prospective security officers can see this and maybe maybe they can uh, draw some inspiration from it. And, um, and, and Ted, we, we want to thank you for what you are doing, because you are contributing to the industry by doing these uh, training videotapes. Well, thanks, Larry. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate, uh, you know, you guys, the time that uh, taking time out of your busy schedules, you know, you. you like, like we talked about, you join forces, but you got your own things going on. And I'm just trying to, to grow the channel, do what, do what I can. Um, so, um, yeah, I just, I, I appreciate, uh, all that you guys have done and that you will continue to do. Cause you know, like we said, Larry, you're, you're the, you're the past chair, Mariana, you're, you're moving up the ladder. So, <laughs> you know, next mm -hmm. is it, I don't know what's, what's after uh, secretary treasurer. I think it's uh, vice, vice chair, maybe. Um, yes. So. Well, I'm getting a little more towards the end of my career, Ted. Oh, all right. All right. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to say that. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've been okay. doing this for a long time. I got you. And Ted, I'm going swimming out back here in the ocean. All right, Larry, you do yeah. that. <laughs> just, just watch out for the Barracuda. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Ted, thank you. All right. Happy holiday. Yeah. Happy thank holidays you to you both. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, Thanks, bye -bye. Ted. Uh-huh.